you on I that. I don't have many years left, and no. I want everything happy. I want everything to feel uh, good. I know. On the Southern Pigskin Radio Network. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, six minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Wednesday morning. There is already... Even though it's only the 15th day of October, there's already Halloween candy all over these radio, this radio station. Yes, I all, love Halloween. All over the place. And every time I take a piece, I say, oh my goodness, this is this can't be good. This can't be good. <laughs> it tastes good, but it can't be good. I know. I uh, love it. Everybody contributes. <clears throat> Believe it or not, I am a baby boomer. <laughs> <laughs> You are also a baby boomer. I don't. Yep. I don't know when we started uh, naming the generations, but uh, the millennials are those children who turned eighteen uh, and in the year two thousand. Uh huh. And not really sure how they figure out how far they go, but I know your son is somewhere between baby boomers and millennials. So that's Generation X? I think so, Or Generation yeah. Y? I never understood oh, this. Oh, could be a, a Y, maybe. I have maybe. no idea. I have no maybe idea. Maybe they're a Y. <laughs> your son is a... Is a <laughs> Is it a, a, a millennial, though? Because he's in that okay. area. So the question is... My kids are X or Y. The question <laughs> is, as I go through the studio and pick up that little miniature... What, what is that thing called? I, I keep it. Yeah, Butterfinger. <laughs> yep. I love those. All right. I keep picking that up. And and I, I must be honest with you. I keep thinking, isn't this like bad? Like, couldn't this <laughs> create diabetes type 2? Um, the question is, though, does my son think this? Does, does the younger generation think about diabetes? And I don't even, I don't even know. But there apparently was a study done, and uh, we have on the phone Elisa Violina. I hope I'm saying her name right. Pretty name, huh? Elisa Violina. Very pretty. Uh, she's a registered dietitian, a certified diabetes educator, with the CDE Help Team Sanofi US. We're going to find out what that is, and also what the study revealed. And just say good morning to Elisa. Good morning, Elisa. Good morning. Nice to be here with you. Where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from New York. White Plains, New York. White Plains. I haven't been to White Plains in years. Yeah, I've been there once. Yeah. Well, thank you for calling in. And um, can I get diabetes by eating a a Butterfinger? (laughs) (laughs) That's a good question. Oh, we don't know? (laughs) Well, this is the thing about diabetes is that it can easily be managed. And there's many different ways to manage your diabetes. And, you know, your question is is a good one because I get that question all the time. What can I eat? You know, how do we manage it? And there's many ways through nutrition and physical activity and and taking your medicine. Do do, do we get it? the survey was interesting. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. But do we get it in the first place by what we eat? I mean, are we actually sabotaging ourselves by eating poorly? There's many different risk factors huh. for getting diabetes, and you have to have that conversation with your doctor. What are the risk factors? Because it's not just one, like, oh, I ate too much sugar, and that caused diabetes. You know, there, there's many different ways, and what we're excited to talk to you today about is this new survey. It was done across the U.S. and across all age groups, and it found a lot of myths, and that's what I'd like to talk to you today about is to dispel those myths. Okay, what, what are they? And, and do, do I have different myths that have trickled down to me than my son might, who's 28 years old? Exactly, and that's actually what it was showing, of differences in attitudes. And one myth uh, is those people with diabetes between the ages of 18 to 34 years old, that's the millennial generation we're talking about, and more than half of them felt that insulin means you're at the end of the road compared to those above the age of 35 years old. And that's not true. Really? Why would they think that? Because everything's so open now. And that's like, you know, uh, putting on your uh, trousers in the morning if you have to take insulin. It's just something that they do. Exactly. It's part of your lifestyle. And, And it was interesting that more than half confessed that they thought that insulin's the end of the road. And being a CDE, when I'm teaching people about Lantus insulin, I hear that same myth time and again. And it's fear-based. It's not true. And, and one person I just recently taught, he was so scared of the needle, and he was this big, large guy, and he was crying out of fear that he said, I'll never inject insulin. That's not part of my plan. And when I showed him the Lantus Solo Star pen and how easy it is, 
and how small the needle is, he felt so comfortable. He's like, oh, just like you were saying, he's like, oh, yeah, it's just like putting on my trousers. It's part of my lifestyle, like brushing my teeth. And that's what people don't know. And he hugged me after. He's like, oh, I feel so much That's all he wanted. He just wanted that hug. (laughs) Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know what's going on there. Here, guy, you know. He was was crying in front of you? Okay, I know what he was doing. You, you must be hot. Let me look at it. Where's your picture? <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. All right. So so what does it look like? What does the thing look like that you're talking about? Yeah. Lancet is uh, <laughs> a long-acting 24-hour insulin. It's the only approved. It's approved exclusively for just once a day, and it's available in the Lancet Solastar pen. It's a depo- basically a disposable pre-filled insulin pen. And it helps to manage your blood sugars. But if the doctor were to choose that for you and you and the doctor come to that decision together, I always tell people as part of their conversation, you have to talk to your doctor if you have any allergies or if you're allergic to insulin. And another common side effect of insulin is low blood sugars, which may be serious. But everyone has a different body and everyone's individualized. So you do have to have that conversation and talk to your provider of what's the best option for you at that point in time and, and i guess it's a doctor question i guess but if you cleaned up your act and started exercising better and losing weight would you eventually not need that anymore that's a great question i, I get that one all the time yeah. and, you know we don't know some people will be on insulin the rest of their lives some will not but what is people don't know about diabetes is the more years you have diabetes your pancreas makes less insulin so if you're insulin, if you're not making enough insulin or you're, you're not using the insulin as efficiently, then all you're doing is replacing what the body needs. You need insulin to survive, so you're just replacing what the body needs. Oh, okay. So does the survey that you, uh, uh, that, 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 that you requested from people, does that survey also include the people that say that they need emotional guidance, they need to have that uh, support team with them? You know, that's always a big piece and and looking at diabetes is that I always tell people you're you're not meant to manage your diabetes alone and that you have a lot of people to help you. You have your doctor. You can ask your doctor to be referred to a certified diabetes educator. So there is that piece of, you know, how, and that's what the survey showed as well, is that 43% of millennials were scared to prick their finger. So... You know, that's an interesting, another thing that it showed was why, you know, we're looking at that and we're saying, okay, with diabetes, you need to know your numbers. And that's, what numbers am I talking about? Those are your blood sugar numbers. And those are important as far as reducing your risk of getting any problems related to diabetes if, if your blood sugars are where they should be. And, and uh, before we run out of time, I want to make sure that the listener. I'm guessing there's two types of listeners, those who have never used insulin needles and those who have. Will, will the people who currently use them uh, switch to the new type, or, or are, is, is this basically something that's been invented for the newcomer and, and the scaredy cats like me? Yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> This is something that, and and that's a great question, that it's no longer that big, scary needle that everyone's so scared of. You know, what what, uh, we developed and the companies have developed is this disposable pre-filled insulin pen that makes it just a lot less, it's easier, it's a smaller needle. And, you know, most people with type 2 diabetes may need insulin at some point in time. It's not because they got worse or they're at the end of the road. That's not what insulin means. It just means that that's the treatment option that you need at that point in time to get your numbers where they should be. Okay. Uh, Thank you for being on the air with us, Elisa. Before we say goodbye, can you uh, mention a website so that our listeners can look up more information? Absolutely. They could go to lancis.com where you have the people that are you could relate to of their stories of their lives that you could look at you could have cd help team there's a link on there but you know also always talk to your provider as well and my notes say that lantus is spelled l-a-n-t-u-s correct yes lantus.com okay and robin makes it easy she puts it on our facebook page so if you're listening and you couldn't write that down and you don't think you're going to remember it don't worry go to WOCA's facebook page and it'll be right there uh alisa violina thank you so much for being on the air with us in beautiful white plains yeah yeah thank you for calling thank you in so much for having me all right we, we will take a little break and we'll be right back
I'm Major George Patterson from the Salvation Army. Please stop by our family store at 120 Northwest 10th Street in Ocala, where on Wednesday you have a 50% off clothing and bric a bac On Friday, 25% off furniture and large appliances. And on Saturday, stop by to our yard sale from 845 to 11. Donations can be made by calling 352-732-4469 and we'll pick it up. Funds from the store go toward the services that we provide in Marion County. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line and a new spoiler and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care. 